Hello everyone, Busy Gamer Dad back again for our second session gameplay recording of Road Warden. So here we do on the Busy Gamer Dad channel is uh, every week we look at a game that's a good session game to pick up, put down, and pick up again at a later date. Uh, they can be fast paced, they can be slow paced, they can be uh, good narratives, they can be no narratives, just uh, action roguelites or uh, full on RPGs that have pretty good uh, tool tips to keep you invested so that when you get back to it at a later time you can pick up right where you left off without too much loss forward momentum. This week we're looking at Road Warden, a game that I particularly love. It harkens back to a lot of the games I grew up with playing on the Mac or on uh, uh, DOS game systems, etc. like King's Quest and all those fun uh, text-based games. This game is um, not going to be for everybody. It's a difficult game to um, kind of wrap your head around with a lot of the more frills and modern systems and things like that, but don't let that fool you this game has a lot going on if you love reading like i do uh fantasy books the witcher uh r.a salvatore books uh the uh forgotten realm series uh, dungeons and dragons that this game is a hundred percent up your alley it's like you're playing one of those uh choose your own adventure books from uh my childhood etc so i love that every time we load into this game there's a new like fortune cookie statement is what i call them um this one we've got some communities distinguish tameable be tameable animals from dangerous beasts while others see them as wild monsters or dark creatures the enemies of our kind they did a really good job with the writing in this game and that's one of the big things because that's a key point for our game or for this game so we're going to pick up right where we left off we're still in our first camp and we did a lot of the uh tutorializing is what it comes down to and we're gonna um, keep going down that path because I feel like it's important to show you guys the pacing for this game it's not fast it's not in your face action it's you have to read you have to have maybe even a notepad on the sides so you take down certain um, reminders for yourself that's the level of this game that's the idea behind this game and I've done that my very uh, one of my very first playthroughs for this game, I had to have a notepad on the side so I could remember what I was doing and where I was going. And I love that stuff, but again, that's not for everybody. I get it. I understand fully. You, some people just want to lay back experience when they play video games. Some people want to lean forward experience. This one's a little bit in the lean forward in the head game space as opposed to being like a sweaty PvP kind of game. So we'll jump right into the narrative. True, but he's considered dead. I doubt he's begrudge you anything and who knows you may just find his shell lying on the roadside tomorrow he wears mail uses spear most likely probably five feet tall but stout long red beard short hair pale face rarely smiles so they're talking about the previous road warden that we learned about in the last uh session gameplay where they don't know what happened to him he dropped off some stuff and we are kind of picking up where he left off but it was un uh, clear on where he left off. She glances at her companion, but after he has nothing, she sits down and stretches her legs. So you find out what happened to him, dead or alive, just let me know. So we did lose our rope, and we remember, and I remember that from um, previous playthroughs with this, that you know you can talk to them and we can do this. You're in luck. She heads towards one of the crates and moves aside a large linen sack, revealing a rope. She brings it back and nonchalantly sits down on her chair. Take it. I was planning on to leave it behind. Free rope is free rope. We could offer, take it and offer food, some food in return, or we can offer some money. I'm going to do the food. Lose the food ration, we will, we, but we got a rope. Tulia leans forward and rests her forearms on her thighs, looking down with clasped hands, then meets your eyes. I'd normally refuse, but we need some decent food. Every day I'm searching through uh, for grow it, <laughs> gratis. Looking for worms and <laughs> forage. We forage, but it's not a great spot. Some food rations will brighten our foggy day. For now, you leave the rope on the table. What happened to our squad? The man shrugs. Bandits happened. And monsters. A strong band, though. His companion chips in. We got to the peninsula in spring. We saw some people living in this camp. The lieutenant decided to avoid it and look for the inn. Look for an inn. We had to travel through the night for a bit. The bearded soldier scoffs and crosses his arms, but she carries on. If he had decided otherwise, we would have would all have been died that day. The innkeeper explained the that the camp is a trap, that armed ones pretend to be soldiers, stay there at night, lose everything you have. Sounds like slave hunters. 
Tulia sighs. Very much so. They, kill, we, they killed some and took others away. Who knows where? They were letting the northerners go, hoping to avoid their wrath. It kind of worked, adds the soldiers. We asked them for help, but they refused. They had the clear... We had to clear the entire camp on our own, and we... That's why only three of our pe or and that's why three of our people died. Don't exaggerate. It's not like the lieutenant didn't make a mistake. He wanted to get rid of them or take over their camp, but we didn't know our enemy well enough. We were outnumbered, and they had an ice mage among them. She looked at you. At least we cleared the roads, saved lives. You mentioned monsters as well. Nothing that would surprise you. Those of us who survived the skirmish were young. Too inexperienced to spend a summer in this place without a good leader, and they didn't trust me. One of them got caught by a treant. Another one ignored my orders to perform some sort of ritual hunt, so a werebear tore her to pieces. The last one tried to act tough, didn't tell us he had cut his hand while cleaning his gamus. She lets out a ghastly chuckle. We had to cut it off, and he was so ashamed that he decided to walk north, find a new life, and disappear. Idiot. What a colorful journey. The man tries to drink from his mug, but it's empty. I've, uh, I can say I've come to make this place safer. I stay silent. I'm going to stay silent. Tulia seems defeated. So that's how she became the lieutenant. Basically, it was attrition. All her people in her uh, band of, I think it was nine, either died or ran off. There's not much of a story, honestly. She looked at her hands, which were currently rolling over the mug over the table. In the cities, there's a strict order of what should we called it. She exchanged looks with her uh, companion, but he can't help her. Well, leader succession, I guess. Havlavan chief selects com commanders. Those select lieutenants, and those put their soldiers in order of priority. If your lieutenant dies, they get replaced by the next soldier in line. So she, she was the natural successor, by default. Nah, not exactly. When we fought the bandits, our lieutenant was hit by a slingshot. His boyfriend jumped to help him, but failed to protect either of them from a spell. It was like a ball of ice that hung above them and exploded, piercing their heads, completely avoiding their shield. Really unpleasant. She pauses. And you were the third in line, right? Love makes you do crazy things. Basically, yeah, she says without enthusiasm. I didn't plan to become a leader, though. I've, I'll get demoted once we return to town. I prefer it that way anyways. What was their squad's mission? The lieutenant looks into your eyes. You know, the usual. Making the road safe, keeping people alive. I explain that it may be important for me to know what they were trying to accomplish. I really can't tell you. Let's just say it would be nice to have a reliable outpost somewhere nearby, a place where you can always find a group of fighters willing to protect you in the name of the law. She tilts her head back. Now, if you have any other questions. So, this dialogue is completely different depending on how you have set your character up and the tones you have created for your character. So in our inventory, we have set ourselves up to be the fighter class. So we have a bunch of, um, you know, a fighter-esque gear. We have the axe, we have the bolts, we have a gamus, and a couple other things here. You can be a, a scholar, essentially, uh, alchemist. You can be a mage. You can also choose how you interact with them, and um, we'll go over that in a little bit when you see another, we'll say, a dialogue choice. All right, let's see. Is there anything you should tell me about the camp? The story is brief. Some merchants built the camp to have an extra stop for the mules and donkeys just between the inn and the southern villages. There's plenty of grass here and a pond nearby. When the peninsula grew more dangerous, the camp stood abandoned, from time to time serving as shelter for travelers. The bandits came here in spring, further paralyzing the exchange of information between the northerners and the southern settlements. Since these highwaymen are no more, the situation may reverse. Time will tell. You can sleep here whenever you want, the man concludes their tale, though I don't expect to wake up with my <laughs> without your back pain. Good to know. If you were me, where would you go next? This is kind of a, an important question, and I'm just going to let you know that you should really do that. The soldier answers quickly. To the inn, of course. He grabs his empty mug. The one northwest of here. If you can't afford the room, the main hall is free of charge. The locals rarely go there. The northern road is much more traveled, mentions Tulia, but the hunters will tell you about this and that, and you'll have a chance to introduce yourself. The innkeeper can listen and knows many souls. So... The inn that he's talking about, or they're talking about, is called the Pelt of the North. And that's kind of one of the major uh, uh, entry points and entry hubs that you'll play through with this game. Any tips you have 
on how to make a good first impression with him. She smirks. Avoid cheap jokes. Stick to your trade. Don't waste his time. Show him that you can be relied on. It's getting late. We should prepare for the night. I agree. Tulia sighs with relief. You may do better than Estrian did. Stay vigilant. She winks at you, shattering the mask of a soldier. Thanks for the help. So, Estrian is the previous uh, road warden. So, like I'd mentioned before, in any uh, typical session gameplay that I try and show you guys, um, there's a journal, and inside your journal, there's a lot of people that you can, you know, click on and find out more information about right here, and get backstory and re-educate uh, yourself on where you're going, and, you know, find the missing road warden. That's one of our major uh, quests right now, is to find the missing road warden, Australian Pelts Innkeeper. That's the guy in the north, groups and places. Havlavin is like w the major hub that's this satellite uh, city that's away from here. Um, the bestiary, this is quite extensive, so I don't recommend you read all through these, but it does help. I'm not going to say it doesn't. You'll eventually run in through your gameplay on many of these, but probably not all of them. And then you have your glossary, which is just as large. So again, you're going to want to, you know, familiarize yourself with this. But again, this is not required reading. I don't play games to do homework unless I'm really in the mood to play a game that has a lot of reading. And this is one of those games where I felt myself wanting to read that. As rare as that is for me to want to read outside of a video game, I've, I wanted to read that to make sure I immerse myself in the world and fully understand what was uh, happening and who I was dealing with and where I was going. And also it helped with the world building. All right, thank you for your help. You go to the barrel and splash water on your face, which makes you even more aware of how much you need a bath. After the night, it will only get worse. Your horse is ready, already napping, still too anxious to lay down. All right, so I will prepare for the wash. So this is my appearance. Um, so you have different uh, meters, essentially, is what it comes down to. Uh, you know, you have your armor, your gamison, you have your f nourishment, you have your health, and then you have your appearance. Which is one out of five, as opposed to being one out of four for everything else. The soldier in the shirt is eager to guide you. Just observe the area. There's plenty of griffin around. Though they won't try to jump over the palisade, probably. Better watch out for the apes. They climb up and carry out any food they can find. And there's this one really loud were-elk that keeps smelling the wall, though it has never tried to get in. He points at the gate. The lieutenant and I will block the entrances. There are... Yeah, we'll block the entrances. They're quite heavy. So if anyone comes here looking for shelter, better call us to help out. And if this someone is being chased by wolves or anything, better throw down, them down the rope instead. He scratches his head. If it gets cold, feel free to make a fire. The best place is on the watchtower. You, make, you may want to put a blanket there or something. The watchtower? I don't have a watchtower. He gives you a long, puzzled look. Oh, here. He points to the pile of crates. Just climb up the, on the tallest one, right here. So they have visual representation of what they're talking about on screen here. Uh, so like Shadowgate. If you played Shadowgate or any of those um, click adventures, that's again what this is like. You'll have a great view of the northern side, the more dangerous side. And also, I know you're tired after all that riding. He points to a tent on the other side of the camp. I can handle a couple of hours of sleep on the ground if you wish. Go after me and rest just once, just this once, at least have a pout inside. I will take him up on that offer because I want to sleep nice and soundly. You put your blanket on the tallest crate and sit down. The night is warm, but the sporadic summer breeze brings gentle refreshment from time to time your back aches you have forced yourself to keep your eyes open the low light of the moon helps you focus on the tall grasses for most of the time you spot smaller critters and birds but there are exceptions at one point you see three horned deer trying to challenge one another before they crash their antlers a two-legged dragonling appears leading its much smaller offspring the furry beasts try to imitate intimidate the predators with roars and aggressive head movements after a few moments both sides walk away slowly not willing to risk the fight nor admit defeat uh, distract you keep looking around you hear the death screams of distant prey and the mating calls of monkeys runners are chasing a gray hare a group of musk oxen lazily chew the grass, preparing themselves to sleep. A dusk fox is running together with a lynx, playing, making playful screeches. Thankfully, you never 
have to intervene. You just sit there, watching the not-so-distant forest, trying to outlast your sleepiness. You can only guess how much time has passed. Once you feel you've had enough, you climb down to go to your tent, waking up the bearded man with just a couple of words. You confirm that nothing important has happened. I gather my things, squeeze into the tent, I yep, do my sleeping. Sleeping in the tent is not the stuff of dreams, but it's much more welcome rest. The pallet keeps the cold soil away. The moonlight saves the outside world from the eerie gloom. You listen to your own breath and find a comfortable position. Your job starts tomorrow. I focus on the real goal of my journey. The Merchant Guild wants to take control of this realm. You wander. The, your wardening duties are secondary. First and foremost, you need to explore the peninsula. Learn about the territory's resources and threats. Get to know the locals, and if you can, convince them to consider negotiating with Havlavan officials and traders. Could the tribes resist the soldiers, or be a threat to the priests of the United Church? Are there any forbidden practices that need to be eradicated, such as blood magic, necromancy, robbery, or slavery? At least I have time. Forty days to be precise. Or exact. I need to be as thorough as I can. So this is our timer. Forty days. This is our daytime, nighttime cycle right here. We have forty days to basically complete this chore that our Havlavin, uh, we'll say, masters, because... They're the ones who have employed us to come up here, even though there was Asturion here, Asturion here, the other Road Warden. Um, so it was already perplexing to send a second Road Warden up here. We have to gain the locals' trust. We have to understand what's happened in the world up here and what kind of maybe pagan rituals that they have, because Havlavin uh, society realizes or um, acknowledges the United Church as the... Uh, we'll say main religion type and tolerated religion type. The other ones that we are actually, that I selected in our previous playthrough to be a part of, um, are actually deemed pagan or uh, sacrilegious. So it is already weird and it's going to change the gameplay dramatically. I encourage you to mess around with it though. Have some fun with it. This game is all about choose your own adventure and those click adventures from yesteryear. Once you finish your reconnaissance, you should speak with Tulia to return to Havlavan. There, you'll report back to your employers and get your reward. In the meantime, you have your own goal to pursue. So this is basically, what do we want? What are we looking for from this adventure? And we can always, you know, pick out our, our, our stuff here. And you can stick to the narrative for yourself. This does affect your, um, we'll say your overarching goal. And your overarching like uh, uh, hero profile or your ideas of what you want to do while you're in your 40-day stretch here. So make sure you're understanding what you're uh, what you're looking for. So in the typical fashion of we have a job, we're looking to do this job. Here's our dad joke for us. I was in a job interview the other day, and they asked if I could perform under pressure. I said no, but I could perform Bohemian Rhapsody. There you go. There's your dad joke because we're we took the job. We're going up north. Yep, that it. I try to draw a dotted line of some type to the dad joke that we're gonna uh, tell. All right, let's see here. So we can get some extra coin. We um, let's retire early, so I can help a person I care about. So I can live prosperity and safety. Get enough connections to become a local leader. Uh, remembered as a hero. I just want to help people, make this region safer. New life for myself. I have a difficult past. I want to forget. Ah, I am going to say the top one. We'll do noble. Yep, you can't sleep during the night. Press sleep. Okay. Oh, you can't travel during the sleep night. Okay, so your half asleep senses are catching the sounds of wild forest. Your instincts keep you alert and anxious. So the the pleasant, humid night air evens out slowly. You're thinking about your goal. All you can do now is rest. So let us sleep. And we will not recover anything. We will lose an appearance. Yep, you spend the night in the cold ground tent. There's nothing special. It will protect you from the rain, ground, etc. Don't need to eat. Yeah, so we're going to have to sleep and we're going to lose a little bit of food. We're going to lose a little bit of appearance. You're woken 
up by sunlight, well rested and ready. Without hesitation, you gather your things. After only a couple of heart, uh, breaths, you notice a weird smell, like a roast. No, burning meat. Burning rotten meat. Disgust crawling into your consciousness. You exit the tent. Your horse is looking around nervously. Your bags were are where you left them. You see an open gate. You go outside and see what happens. Oh, the pyre is lit. Oh. Both soldiers are standing near a humble pyre. The man in the shirt looks at you contemplatively. Tulia is the first one to address you. Leto, she gre greets you with a nod. We use the horse's manure for the flames, so don't worry about cleaning it up. You see a corpse among the flames. It's impossible to tell if it belongs to a male or a female, but it was an adult. The burning process would have been over, would have been for more a couple hours, okay? The latter, the young woman, the young one, she lacked the pneuma um, to understand that she couldn't get inside the camp without climbing. I stabbed her with a spear from a safe distance. She shifts her weight. One more fog and she'd be a real threat. Even now, it took a couple hits to knock her down. Sooner or later, every human shell wakes up, gaining more strength with each soul it devours and each moment it spends in the fogs. D burning the dead is not just a religious practice, it's a necessity. Soldiers, priests, ma village mayors, even road wardens, making a large pyre takes a lot of time, but it saves lives. Tulia calls the undead a she. Most Unites hesitate to do so. So there's a there's a note. You want to make sure you're kind of trying to read in, the, in between the lines? Time for me to leave. So you can understand that, you know, there was a woman, uh, an, a woman who died, and tried to get into the palisade for some reason. Running away from the reek? Huh? I don't blame you. She walks away with a few steps. Find us here if you need us, or if you learn what happened to Asturion. There's enough ground here for you to rest. Safe travels. These words make you stop. An old farewell, mocked in a number of songs and tales, but yet you hear no scorn in Tulia's voice. You wonder how many acts of kindness like this one you're going to experience in the days following. She returns to the pyre. So there's enough ground here for you to rest. Safe travels. That's the, the notes that she's talking about. I prepare myself for the journey. You somehow miss the fact that your mount is already saddled and warmed up. You double-check the equipment, but you don't need to fix anything. The soldiers were diligent. Normally, preparing any palfrey for a long journey takes a lot of time. You put on your gameson and make sure your axe is tightly attached to your belt. Then get in the saddle. The palfrey knickers, ready to leave. It's time to get to the crossroads north of here. Alright, let's ride to the north. Looking forward to continuing your journey. You, once you've done with the north, speak to Tulia to return to Hoflavin. So this is basically where we go back. This is the map key where we can shelter. This little flag is us, essentially. So we will travel north. Even at a later hour, you wouldn't expect to meet any travelers in the valley. The warm summer breeze lures your mount forward, but the serene chirping of birds is quickly replaced by the distracting screeches and gurgles, gurgles coming from further down the path. You soon find a pack of four-legged griffins. They're larger than foxes and merge the features of a bird and a furred beast. Each one is a different size, coat, and color, and their temperaments are just as varied. Their fronts are covered with vivid feathers, while their rears are darkened fur. Their wings are massive, making them impressive jumpers, but they're too heavy to fly. After about after, uh, uh, about two dozen beasts are yelling, brawling, and chasing each other around, blocking your path. Consider my options. You can't enter the force, uh, forest blindly. If the, these or other creatures were to chase after you, the thicket would be disastrous for your horse. There are reasons why travelers stay close to the main roads as possible, and why adventurers move in groups. Usually the safest approach would be to stay where you are and just wait for the pack to get hungry. It may, however, take up to a couple of hours. You're thinking about your conversation with Tulia. You've got to, a lot to do, and time may be of the essence. If you have any vitality points, you can use the warrior training to access unique traits. So, we can force ourselves. We can use violence, we can use the axe. So, we can do that. We can, um, these icons represent like a dice roll um, icon, more actions that involve a random chance. Take our axe and hurry the horse. If we ride fast enough, we should be fine. Stay here, better safe than sorry, grab my crossbow. Getting through them should be easy enough. 
So now we are, we can toggle this option. You're not locked in once you click. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to use the ax. I'm going to ride through because I have it. I might as well use it. Initially, your horse completely trusts your guidance, though after a few more steps, it snorts. You prepare your axe and get ready to push away any griffins willing to jump on you. Once you get in the middle of the surprised herd, your mount squeals and gallops forward. The creatures in front of you flee, but others try to jump at you from both sides. You kick two of them away, and while the third one gets close, it beak lands on your boot. The hard leather keeps you safe. You ride away. The griffins can't keep up. You still hear their screeching when the mount slows down. Don't give them the opportunity to catch up. So here is our character tree. So this is the advanced training that you that was uh, talking about. You know, after years of being a fighter, we have this. So force. When your vitality is above zero, you can find a way to overcome physical options. Advanced training. You have the advantage during physical interactions that involve random chance. All right. So we'll keep on going. So we have an achievement. Keep track of your achievements and your quests unfold. So right here. I used to be a fighter. Along the top, you'll start getting little um, pips. The road splits. According to what the soldiers have told you, you may find safety in by turning, safe in by turning left. The forest to the right is lush and the trail overgrown. Kids used to have a song. How did it go? The harshest pathway leads to the dragon's lair. Those who search for treasure do you truly dare? The signpost in front of you doesn't make your situation much clearer. It was put here by someone who can't write, for folks who can't read. Covered in old red paint, it points east. Blood there, as people say. Danger to be found. There's not a soul to ask for guidance. So I don't want to go to the right and be dead. So I'm going to look at my horse. <laughs> and this is the horse's name, Sodial. I'll leave it Sodial. So dial is peaceful as you stroke its mane. Maybe it can't help you choose a path, but you've spent many years together. Happy to go on, it takes a couple of steps forward. You spot a few berry shrubs and wild cabbage, but they still need at least two weeks to gain maturity. So two weeks, 20 days, essentially 14 days. So we have a choice to make. We can go left or we can go right, east or west. I'm gonna go to the west and I'm gonna go to the inn. So Dial trots with ease, unbothered by the few branches covering the beaten path, beaten road. The bird songs and distant howls draw your attention to the forest, which grows, gets sparser and brighter. You spot boars, roe deer, and saurians. The sight of a nearby wolf pack worries you, but once you push your hips forward and your palfrey enters a canter, the beasts don't even begin to pursue. The speed alone will protect you from many dangers. You notice a stone tower, taller than the trees. That must be the inn that we've heard so much about. And we will explore this inn in our next episode, our third and final episode for the session gameplay series on the Busy Gamer Dad channel. This is Road Warden, a wonderful click adventure game hearkening back to my childhood, like the Shadowgate era, the uh, DOS games, the... Uh, choose your own adventure books, etc. I love this game. I can't uh, recommend this enough, but again, I understand that this style of game is not going to be for everybody. It's very D&D-esque and investment-esque, where you've got to pay attention to the story arc. you got to maybe take some external notes, but in the session gameplay series, I look for games for us that also have really good journals and really good ways of keeping track of where you're at in the game, so if you don't come back to it for weeks, you can actually open up these journals and look and say, oh, I was there, oh, I was doing this. So so hopefully you like this video, comment, subscribe, let me know if there's uh, any paths that you would recommend to go down for the last and final episode, or if you want me to pick this up and maybe do a longer playthrough, I would definitely uh, be open to that because I love this game, I love the idea of bringing this style of gameplay back. We'll see you in the third and final episode, good luck and have fun out there, bye!